You know what, Nicole? I could really go for a Pop-Tart right now. I don't think my father, the inventor of Toaster Strudel, would be too pleased to hear about that. Morris Hendizade invented the Toaster Strudel? <laughs> You've never seen Mean Girls, have you? This, this is, is a, a hot, hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. I'm your host, Aaron Samuels. And I'm your host, Gretchen Wieners. <laughs> and Mean Girls really is one of the formative early 2000s comedies. Like, I'm going to be showing my grandchildren that the same way that my dad showed me Blazing Saddles. Hmm, that's so fetch. That is fetch. Speaking of fetch, Nicole, did you know Toaster Strudel once did a limited time offering of Mean Girls themed Toaster Strudel? Oh, that makes sense. And they featured the word fetch on the packaging. So Huge. she was right to have not stopped trying to make fetch happen. It happened. And it did literally happen, thanks to Pillsbury and Toaster Strudel. Uh, but today, Nicole, we're not discussing the merits of uh, Tina Fey and, oh, uh, what's that guy? Tim Meadows' role in Mean Girls. He's the principal, He's right? He's the principal. And Tim Meadows yeah. crushes that freaking role, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we are discussing Pop-Tarts versus Toaster Strudel. Now, these are the preeminent... Not the eminent, not the post-eminent, the preeminent <laughs> toaster pastries in the game right now. Yep. On the left side, we got Kellogg's Pop-Tarts uh, versus Pillsbury Toaster Strudel on the right. Pop-Tarts are the original. Toaster Strudel are the usurper. Literally only created in response to Kellogg's massive success with Pop-Tarts, which I believe were invented in 1964 and then went wow. nationwide in 1965. That's awesome. After, of course, General Electric brought the home toaster to Americans in 1909, they were begging, Nicole, begging for a pastry to be fed into their gaping <gasps> maws. Oh, no. To feed, oh, strike one for toaster strudel, Nicole. A little premature. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it just happens. Sometimes it just happens. And all you can do is apologize and lick I'm it so off. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what are your initial thoughts in this battle? Well, I'm, I've always been team toaster strudel. I know um, you have. Because Pop-Tarts were not allowed in my house. I were think it's toaster strudel? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why. What was the what was the Probably moral this backlash? Probably because one had frosting in it, and I don't think my mom knew that these had frosting in it <laughs> until it was too late, and she saw me putting frosting on it. That's and then the precedent was already established. Yeah, and she's like, "Oh, I guess the toaster strudels are good." That's funny. Yeah. So I grew up with whatever was on sale. Mm -hmm. It's really funny because I don't think when grocery shopping we really mapped out like value versus budget, mm -hmm. but. My dad was from the era that if anything was on sale, you just bought it, even if you didn't need it. Yeah. And so I had sort of an equal amount of Pop-Tarts or a generic brand toaster pastry that we got from like... Are you going to get me like a towel or something? <laughs> oh my... <laughs> I'm sorry. It just felt really natural. You could go I saw the glint in your eye and I was like, what's she about to say right now? Um, I'm so sorry. No, listen, if you get your frosting on somebody, it is your job. <laughs> to help them clean up. <laughs> I love this podcast. Get friendly. <laughs> All right. So should we, should we, should we dig in? Like yeah. really discuss culinarily what's Just happening? Just so you here? know, the pop tarts, I put in the oven toaster for like <laughs> two minutes and then the toaster should I put in for like two and a half minutes. Well, so that's like, to me, a strike off of toaster strudel. Why? Right off the bat, because it takes longer. Because and this is have... obviously a breakfast oh of convenience. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Just because you can have it raw or like unhot <laughs> or you can have, or whatever <laughs> does not make it better okay the toast strudel it's is one a aspect hot, it's one aspect no the toaster strudel is a hot thick pocket of love and i love it so much these are like uh, the the pop tarts are like dinky they're like little dinky like like do you hear this dinky listen did you say hot pocket of love <laughs> that's, that's okay a toaster strudel is just a hot pocket I mean, I guess it's it's very similar, and also toaster strudels did make something called toaster scrambles. That's the that's actually which, a point for it. That's a point for well, it. To, no, toaster scrambles are not included in the toaster strudel. Okay, we cannot, yes, they are. No, they're. I, I I fully believe they're not. Are we eating these? Yeah, I'm eating a pop tart. Looks like we got the strawberry frosted pop tart. Not my favorite pop tart. More of a brown sugar cinnamon girl. You know how human memory is like very unreliable. Okay. I think that all of human thoughts and experiences, likes and dislikes, are incredibly unreliable. Okay, memento. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. For real, for real, for real. I don't think we can divorce it from, from positive memories we've had, from marketing campaigns, okay. right? From how we want to be perceived in the world. If you were to take an uncontacted tribe 
Sentinel Island. Okay. There's a tribe on Sentinel Island, Nicole, never been contacted. People try and contact, and missionary tried to go there, boom, arrow right to the face. I They're love like, that. get the fudge out. I actually really like that. Respect the Sentinelese people. Come on the podcast. Um, if you were to take both of these products to an uncontacted tribe, I don't think they'd be like, ooh, Pop Tarts are better. I don't think anybody in the right mind would. Have you even tried it? To- try the toaster strudel. Let me eat a toaster strudel. Are Did you, you not frost it? Can you, can, you, can you frost mine for me? Sure. Or do you need somebody to be assigned to frost your... That's no. the reference to Mean Girls. Maggie I, gets it. I don't get it. I've, I really what do, do want me to draw on just, just don't draw. What are you going to do? What do you want me to draw? I would always try and draw, but I can never rip the packaging good enough. Well, I want you to draw... Boobs? Boobs? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. Do I'm trying it. to put myself back in the mindset of being a child when I would have like eaten these every single day. Are we thinking D cup? What are we thinking? I'm D-cup? inclusive. I know, just whatever. Like, is like a natural. I think beauty is na- a natural. I think natural beauty is beautiful. Okay. There's multiple ways this can go. <laughs> just okay, squirt the either, frosting on my damn toaster it can strudel. Either look like eyeballs or it can yeah, look like really a weird apple. Really perfectly shaped. What angle? It's like somebody's upside down <laughs> on a roller coaster, and this is how they, they look would like be Christmas existing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> there. I'll, shut okay. Up. I'll draw on yours. I'll draw on yours. What mm-hmm. do you want me to draw? Um. Whatever you want. Well, so that's a point for toaster strudel. If we're yeah, just sort creative of creative expression. Creative expression. Okay. Um, now it's now it's like Harry Potter glasses. Okay, I am drawing a hot dog with two eggs. <laughs> Josh, me and you are actually five years old. But see, that's what toaster strudel does. It makes you feel like a child, and that's kind of special. Like pop tarts, like on the go, whatever. They're sugary. They're syrupy. Whatever. But see, the thing about toaster strudel, you get to play with your food a little bit, and it's fun. In the time in which I have wasted, wasted. drawing <laughs> on my toaster strudel, Nicole, I could have had three different rental properties by now. Did you say I could wasted? have been getting mailbox money. Okay, so this is what I Josh could have been drew. out there, you know, grind setting, setting up my LLCs. Okay, so Josh apparently made a rocket ship with two eggs. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love eggs. I love rocket ships. <laughs> what did I make? Um, Boom I don't know. I just, anytime I see an abstract drawing, I just see my parents fighting. Can you flip one over? And I don't, <laughs> I don't know what it's the other way. I don't know what you, this is a, a lot, I don't, I'm eating it. Okay. Mm-hmm. A violent red color scheme. Okay, like this isn't violent, like the, like the, like the pop tart isn't violent inside? No, I believe, well. There's the same amount of violence. This but there's so much more goo to a toaster strudel. Mm. Right? <laughs> objectively, objectively, toaster strudel is a more delicious product. Oh my god, it's so delicious. Right? Like, there is no comparison. However, when I talk about humans not intrinsically knowing how to feel or what to think, like, I was talking about, I was talking to Lily earlier about drinking, like, I had a $30 cup of coffee once, right? Yeah. I remember that story. And I drank it. And I was like... Because it was Yemeni coffee, right? Yeah, it was like Yemeni coffee. It was um, Mokhtar, Al-Khan Sh- Mokhtar Al-Khan Shali, I believe his name is. Mm-hmm. Um, fantastic book called The Monk of Mocha about his work. But he did a collab with Blue Bottle where he mm-hmm. had these beans. And it, it wasn't 30 bucks, but I think it was like 18 to 20 Whatever. or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I remember drinking it and, and I'd never distrusted my own palate more. Because huh. I was like, oh my God, I do taste the cherry blossom notes, Nicole. I taste... The hand, I taste young cocoa. I don't taste old cocoa or or or, or middle aged cocoa. I taste young what cocoa young in these cocoa coffee mean? beans. I don't know. Is but that I a drank it And I felt <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Huh, okay. Where I'm going with all this is like Pop Tarts has had such a better, more successful, more interesting marketing campaign. They've done Are you so many me? more What's so fun interesting collabs. about it? Do you remember oh the Pop Tart uh, commercials? The uh, no crazy good. <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> if I said crazy good that is means that, nothing to you is that is that with the little like blue stripe one was that the purple no but stripe? the blue stripe one i'm so glad you asked wildberry and like then they one. did a toby Maguire spider-man collab okay, called okay. spidey berry and so like i have all of these memories locked up in pop tarts which are objectively it is a worse, worse product it's a crusty product the yeah. the um the the edges on a pop tart are like damn near inedible. Yeah, and you know I, what I mean. I, I mean, I mean. Also, look at the look at the way that it's iced. It's iced uh, haphazardly, Hap- haphazard icing. Haphazard icing. <laughs> and the thing with the icing is like it's hard and crusty. It all kind of has to be because it's shoved in a toaster. Sure. And you are shaving like time off for convenience. 
I often talk about certain brands like this of mm-hmm. being like the victim of coming first. I get that. Um, uh, there's a brand called Arctic Zero Ice Cream that I think about a lot. You Is know, that the predecessor to Dippin' Dots? To Halo Top. Oh. Arctic Zero said we're going to be the tab of ice cream. Tab was the first ever diet soda. Sure, yeah. Arctic Zero. And there may have been predecessor brands to it, but this is the first one that I saw. It had like 170 calories in a pint, 20 grams of protein. Mm-hmm. I was an athlete at the time. I cared about that stuff more than I do now. But I was like, I'm going to eat this. It tasted terrible. Sure. But it tasted like just good enough to keep eating. Halo Top comes out like Changes the game. six, seven years later. And they basically got to like use all the science that Arctic Zero had figured out, use all the anecdotal market research, what people want and don't want. And Halo Top then blew them out of the water. And then Halo Top was now in a race against all of the major ice cream brands who are now coming out with their own like 270 calorie pints. Okay. Pop-Tarts came 20 years before Toaster Strudel. Okay, that doesn't mean it's better. Just be okay. Hear hear me out. No, you're right. I I, I think it's worse because it came before. Here's a thought exercise. Just because it came before doesn't mean it's better. No. Yeah. So it shouldn't be the best. I'm almost saying the opposite. Okay. I'm saying that Toaster Strudel had 20 years to figure out a product that would beat Pop Tart. Good. And they did. But they did not. In terms sales, of, but sales, oh, yeah. sales wise. Well, who? Can, well, I'm not talking about sales wise. I'm talking about breakfast on breakfast enjoyable wise. I agree with that, and I agree this is a more enjoyable product. Yeah. If I were to go to a store right now and buy either toasted strudel pop tart, I would buy pop tart because of all for of yourself? the memories I have for myself. Yeah. Okay. I would get the brown sugar cinnamon. That's or the s'mores one. ones, because okay. the s'mores ones, I mean, that was Those where they good. really jumped the shark and they're like, there ain't nothing breakfast about yeah. this anymore, baby. <laughs> this is for a dessert or this is for like an intoxicated college kid coming home and they're slamming Pop-Tarts. You know what I mean? So basically, Toaster Strudel made the gamble of like, hey, we, have tw- uh, we, we are 20 years behind. We need to make a product that is so much better than Pop-Tart mm-hmm. that people won't even care that they've had 20 years of market capital, of brand recognition, uh, of campaigns on the market and they did a pretty damn good job, but they're still losing the war. Well, I don't think, I don't think they're trying. I think they understand there's a legacy connected to pop tarts and it's really hard to be able to nudge out a legacy like that. I agree. So, so so I don't, I don't think it's for nothing. I think, Mm. I think it's a good product, but pop tarts. Okay. Well, again, it, do you like tarts more? Do you like Mm. strudel more? Oh yeah. We got to get into the etymology. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So like like the actual dough, it's like, it's like a tart dough. It's like a short crust pastry, like very snappy, very like dough like, not, not dough like, very pie like. Mm -hmm. And then your toaster strudel is a little bit doughy, a little bit crispy, a little bit lighter. So you have a lot of products have origin stories where it's like, Ruth Wakefield was a home baker and she tried to make a chocolate cookie, but then she went oopsies and spilled chocolate chips. And they have these very homey origin stories. Um, both of these are just like corporate suits. And that's fine. No, it, it's fine. But I'm saying there's like... We um, live in a society. <laughs> but they were literally just like, we're trying to game the market right here. And Pop-Tart, so the original name wasn't Pop-Tart. It was just called like Filled Scones. Filled scones? So it was initially this referred was to as a scone. Scones. These come out in 1964, right? It hit market in like 1965, 66 mm-hmm. nationwide. Andy Warhol. No, this is real. Check this out. Andy Warhol, right? Campbell's Soup, Andy Warhol, 1962, I okay. think. The pop art movement was in full swing. They literally called it pop tarts to freaking get on the upswing of, of pop the art. Of pop art. And that That's was already smart. a genre that was like celebrating brands in this weird way. You're not even celebrating them, but, you know, just sort of um, understanding that these are things that have like massive recognition over us. Toaster Strudel comes out in 1985. Strudel, German. When does the Berlin Wall fall? 1989. It is 89? 81. 89, 91. 89, 91. Berlin Wall. When, when did... 1989. I'm right. Please give me 10 points. Let me ask. Pillsbury. <laughs> Pillsbury. Americans... How trustworthy... Okay, we're Jews. I am. You are. Maggie? Totally. How trustworthy do we find Germans? I'm not saying it's fair. No, no, hear me out. I am dead serious, though. I am dead ass serious. When marketing things to, like, a mass... <laughs> to, like, a mass population in America, especially in 1985, was Strudel the right way to go? Let me tell you. Germany, they do good things. They have great techno music i have german friends like no no, no like I'm just, but i'm <laughs> saying like up. at the time let me and i know west germany at the time was like there's you let know me tell you. david hasselhoff 99 you know? luft balloons great Nena. song oh. Nena. 
It's uh, a really heavy song, by the way. For people who don't know, uh, 99 Luftballons. Uh-huh. Very, very heavy song. It's a great song. Uh, Germans, but nuclear war eviscerating uh, population. Uh, Germans made the Mercedes Benz. Great car. Uh, I don't know if German, Germans and auto manufacturers. They make great cars. What those cars are used for is all, you know, the history. You could still drive a Mercedes now. No, I agree. Like, listen. <laughs> Germans have made incredible things, one of them being Strudel. I agree. So... Strudel, um, it's either German or Austrian, depending. And it's also, again, these countries didn't, like, exist. Yeah. Like, Prussia used to be a country. It was Which the is Aust- so crazy to me. It was the Austro-Hungarian Empire. What's crazy is countries that you think you know now are not going to exist in the future, right? Really? Macedonia changed its name to North Macedonia. You believe that? I can't believe that. Greece. South Sudan used to be part Greece, of Sudan. Right? Mm, Macedonia was a part of Greece. Yeah, there was some weird thing with Greece where Greece was like, Macedonia is just a part of Greece. So you had to rename yourselves North Macedonia. And they were like, mm. it's weird, but okay. Oh, okay. Um, but anyways, the like recognition between a tart and a strudel, what do you think more Americans know of? What do they know more of? What like, do what do they mean? Like, which is a better marketed pastry? Because this is not strudel, right? And this is not a tart. Tart no. is roughly the French word for pie. This is like a short a crust. Pi- hand pie dough, yeah, I Kind of, but like if, if you were to ever order like a pie, like a hand pie and from a restaurant like and it came like this, you'd be like, well, let that's me tell a Pop-Tart. You. No, no, no. I think it'd be fun if somebody made an artisanal Pop-Tart and like said like, oh, there's like... Oh, and they have. There's like, uh, I don't know, like uh, what's that one... <laughs> What's that one bottle that had the apple inside of it, but it was liquor? Oh, it was a bottle of Armagnac, yeah. right? No, no. It had a cooler name than that. Come on, Josh. Go in that big brain of yours. I don't know. Come, my dude, brain, come on. No, yeah, I can't. I can't Ca- stop Calvados, Calvados. Calvados. Like, Calvados. imagine somebody made, like, a Calvados apple pear cinnamon Pop-Tart. Mm. Mm. It's classy, right? Put a green cardamom in there or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I would eat that and I'd be impressed by it. But if somebody gave me a toaster strudel where I had to do my own piping, <laughs> I think I would be equal, equally impressed. No, and I, I've seen bakeries make versions of both of these, uh-huh. like, as an homage to it, especially, like, the homemade Pop-Tarts and sure. whatnot. But, like, do you think if this was named, like, a toaster tart or something? Toaster tartlet? Toaster tartlet. I would eat it. Right? More. Same. I think strudel. I, I think strudel was wrong. I don't think it is recognizable enough to an American audience, and unfairly, That's unfairly, maybe German. That's not true. German uh, Germany Germans came here, and they were the largest population. I'm, to be clear, I'm full blood German, half Jew you, German, and half. You can't like, be full blood German. What? You're not full blood German. What am I? You're half. You're half German. Half? Did you say you're like Nordic or something? No. What I'm are like, you? So my okay. So 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 let's let's get let's get into Josh's family lineage. Okay, to discuss you do whether that, or not I can judge toaster that, strudel. Before you do that, I'm a hundred percent Persian. I'm ninety nine point nine percent Persian. Point five percent Ashkenazi Jewish. Point five percent God knows what else. Probably alien. And that's just like someone else's hair fell in the little vial when you sent it in, right? Like you're just full. You're full blood Persian. I'm full blooded Persian, which means there's probably well, you're like part Tehrani in and part. Well, I'm Tehrani and Kosh. She, also known as Tashi. <laughs> no one's going to get that unless you like two people. Um, but Shout yeah. out to all our Persian listeners. Okay. <laughs> There's none. Um, maybe like four. You were saying? So, what are you? Uh, family Sharer is a very German name. Sheep farmer. Uh, we've been farming sheep in the Americas since like the 1600s. Uh-huh. Like deep Dwight Schrute style Pennsylvania Dutch, <laughs> which is Pennsylvania Deutsch, so German. Uh-huh. Uh, and like a, a you know central PA. And on my other side, they were the Jewish German side. Family fled, general unrest. People have okay, not, like, you so know, you Jews are have gone German. through some stuff. Yeah, so they were German Jews, and a lot of people are like, oh, German Jewish. That's that's well, People say that about Persian Jews, too. Like, yeah. oh, that doesn't exist. And it's like, no, there's a reason, right we're, there's a reason we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a reason we're in America. Yeah. Um, so anyways, awesome. point is, I'm full German, so I can talk. <laughs> that's true. What the hell are we talking about? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Why do my fingers taste kind of, my fingers taste kind <laughs> of bitter? They don't taste good. It tastes chemically. My fingers taste like chemicals. Which that- one of these would you say tastes more chemically? Oh, that's a good one. I think the artificial textures of the Pop-Tart. I'm going to go with Pop-Tart. Yeah, these are... Nothing in nature tastes like this. No. But I do taste a little bit of... I taste a little bit of wheat. I taste a little bit of more strawberry-ishness in the toaster strudel. There's something about Pop-Tarts that reeks of... We did not yet have the technology to make this delicious, right? Interesting. I you know think what I mean? I think it's delicious, but I don't think it holds a candle to toaster strudel because of the texture and the warmth and the pocket pocketness of, sorry, <clears throat> and the pocketiness of 
toaster strudel. I don't think it holds a candle. It's a th th this is a pillowy, thick, luxurious breakfast item. The pop tart is just a cardboard filled with I don't know boring stuff. Do you know what strudel means? Oh, I think it's the act of the. I think so. I think it's the act of the uh, dough being thinned out, right? Strudeling? What? Did you just like make something up on the spot? No. Did you just not want to say no? No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure that's what a strudel... Strudel means like to, to lay out very thinly. Strudel means whirlpool. <laughs> <laughs> you you might there might be it, well, it may have well, become well whatever you think about it whenever you roll it it looks like a whirlpool and you can't do that if the dough isn't stretched out so technically <laughs> so I'm right <laughs> is mean um, okay I'm toasted sorry. strudels nothing can hold a candle to the taste right yeah like like this is this is dry this is crusty and it's like delicious objectively it's laden with sugar and yeah, fat yeah, yeah. it's it's good. But this, like you said, this is warm. It hugs your mouth. It yeah. makes you feel like like a grandma, but a grandma who came of age. Like she had to like work in the factories during the war and didn't have time to cook. So she's like, yeah, I use canned filling. Like this tastes like a grandma made something and like deep fried a weird item that you've never had before. It's it's really, really good. It's really good. These are not like desserts. They're not meant to be these eaten are, for dessert, also, right? I don't think these are substitute goods. So you don't you think you think the premise of this podcast mm -hmm. is erroneous. Absolutely erroneous. What Josh. if I told you that <laughs> this was literally invented to be a substitute good for this? Toaster Strudel's original you? marketing campaign was something better just popped up. Better than what? Pop tarts. That's all fine and dandy. <laughs> 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 but it just, it just, it, they're so different. Pop tarts are shelf stable. Toaster Strudel you need to put in the freezer. I agree. Like an ego. I think you they made. You know what you should have put instead of pop tarts here? French toast sticks. <laughs> you ever thought about that? Whatever you're thinking of the creative hate, of the podcast. Can I say what? something? I what? love <laughs> frozen waffles and I love frozen pancakes. I grew up on Krusty's frozen pancakes. I, love I them still both. think they're great. Me too. Frozen French toast sticks are far and away the worst frozen breakfast product. I think they're awful. There's oh, just no, something about them that like is so far from actual French toast. Really? Yeah, what is it? It's like they're, I it's, love they're them. hard, they're crusty. They're, no, they're soft in the middle. They're not, yeah, but they're like still like wet you, and chewy. You, like what's there's a so, skin on them. It seems as though you were not following the directions on the box. <laughs> I'm probably not. <laughs> yeah, because every time I had them, they were like fluffy on the inside and then kind of a little bit crisp on the outside. Read the directions on the box. I can't stop eating the Pop Tart. It calls me like a siren song. That's me with the toaster strudel. And it sounds like crazy good. <laughs> You neither of you remember the crazy good camera. I think they have these so. weird animated. Yeah, they're like they're crazy like stick good. They do, they, do, they do they do this. There was one where like good. a man jumps into a kangaroo's pouch and it, it, a kangaroo steals a man's pop tart. Kangaroo's pop tart. Man is is quite mad about it. Jumps into the kangaroo's okay. pouch, starts throwing out like tires and old boots and and must plunge his hand into the kangaroo's stomach and and rips out a fully intact pop tart, implying many things uh, about a, a kangaroo's anatomy that I don't believe to be true. <laughs> Speaking of these not being substitute goods, we can agree that neither of these should be like a breakfast, right? This should have been called, the toaster shooter should have been called a toaster Danish. If it wanted to be a breakfast item. It is a breakfast item. Okay, but strudel is not eaten for breakfast. Neither is a tart, to be clear. Okay. Right? Yeah. So you're saying like <laughs> if this wanted to be a direct substitute good of a Pop-Tart, it would have been called a toaster Danish. Yes. I want, do they make toaster Danishes? Because I would like to have them. They should. What about microwave Danish instead of toaster Danish? Danish? Yeah, why are both of these uniquely toastable product. I, I guess, I wonder if more Americans oh. now have toasters or more Americans in, say, 1965. Probably they do. You know what well, I mean? If it well, I'm a toaster oven girl. <laughs> so I have a toaster oven. Are you toaster oven or are you toaster? I only, I, so I, I hate toast. I hate toasters just because I, I don't Excuse make me. toast. And if I do, mm -hmm. I just, I put it under the full oven broiler. Oh. But I almost never make toast. Like, I like bread, but I'll pan fry it. You know? Okay. Like I just kind of put bread in a pan of some oil. Okay. No, see, I... Oh, Danish rings. Oh, my gosh. Kellogg's Danish rings? Wait, that Maggie, when like were Kellogg's Jerusalem Danish rings invented? That looks like a Jerusalem bagel. <laughs> Wait, hold on. So, we have just learned new information from producer Maggie that Kellogg's once invented a product called Danish rings that looks very similar to Toaster Strudel. Kellogg's owns Pop Tart, right? Toaster Strudel owned by Pillsbury, which is owned by 1968 Danish Go Rounds. What happened? 
I don't so know. toaster strudel wasn't just invented, Nicole, to try and compete with Pop-Tart. It was invented because the dearth of Kellogg's Danish rings no longer being on the market. Utterly fascinating. Um, you know what I think is really funny? That you look like Dwight Schrute more than I thought you did. <laughs> no. I was going to like... <laughs> it's the closet. I was going to talk about like, like... You look like you could be related <laughs> to Dwight Schrute. I was going to talk about wheat milling production back in the 1800s, actually. I'm sorry, I'm not here to bother and, and you. is it bad that I act more like Dwight Schrute <laughs> than, than I should? In this podcast, you're pure dr- Dwight Schrute. Like, dr- you're like pure Dwight schrute it. It's ridiculous. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Continue. Pillsbury <laughs> was the second company in America to use steel rollers to mill wheat. <laughs> General Mills, number one. General Mills... They wait 150 years, Nicole, 150 years to then buy Pillsbury, but then antitrust laws uh-huh. in America say, you got to give it, you got to give some of it back. General Mills, you own too much. Kellogg's yearly profit, 15 billion revenue, whatever. <laughs> General Mills yearly <laughs> revenue, 20 billion. Yeah, I mean, these are two men. That, that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for the attention of two giant m- meal, meal production senpais. So this is Kellogg's. So, <laughs> so, so Pop-Tart is Kellogg's? Yeah, founded by, of course, uh, John Harvey Kellogg, who believed in yogurt enemas up the bum bum. And then, and then the toaster strudel was invented by Pillsbury. <laughs> Illinois congressman. So no, no, no. Pillsbury, General Mills. Yeah, it was invented by Pillsbury. Okay, we're can we do the, the Pillsbury, the, the boy noise? Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no, oh, it's, no, it's like oh, a giggle. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> okay. It's like you poke his stomach and he goes, <laughs> when I think of the Pillsbury Doughboy noise, I just think of uh, Damon Wayans in the movie Major Pain. Have you ever seen that? No. Incredible. Somebody look up. I don't know if it holds up, but, mm. but anyways, uh, <laughs> he goes and talks to one of his, he's like an ROTC instructor. He goes, and call he, someone Doughboy. He's also like a commander. Yeah. He goes, if I poke you in the stomach, will you go, <laughs> like the Pillsbury Doughboy, and it's like one of my favorite delivered Aww. lines ever. Um, I, I yeah, love me some of the Wayne's family. Um, what I'm saying is both of these are, are desserts, right? They're not breakfast. Well, I like a savory dessert. I mean, it's, <laughs> well, I like a savory breakfast more than a uh, sweet breakfast. So I agree. Yeah. We have to look, though, at the utility of both of these being eaten for breakfast. You know what I mean? I will say, this mimics strudel more than this mimics a tart okay josh you need to think about who this is marketed to this is marketed yes. to marketed to children, children. And 60 you have to percent think about, of uh, pop-tart consumers are children you have to think about this from like a busy consumer like mom dad whatever so you're trying to get your kid to shut up while it's the morning time oh, and, and the only way you can get them to shut up is if they do creative activities a lot of the time so like they're busy with their food and the toaster strudel does that because they have this little this little snot rocket of of icing where they can draw on their food. You don't get that. Give them a Sharpie and a Pop-Tart. Why would I do that? So they, they can can't draw eat the, on their food. They can't eat Sharpies. Um, it's I think better. Though, it's a better product. Having screaming children, being a screaming child yourself, Pop-Tarts are significantly better because there's not a five-minute wait time of putting this... In a toaster, you know, and then waiting for it to cool. Oh my God! Imagine how your child, Nicole, you can your also beautiful, microwave it large the son, <laughs> will just be screaming, "Wah! Ah! Ah! I want to watch YouTube on my iPhone 19." <laughs> ah! He will scream, <laughs> and it's gonna keep going for three minutes while that's there. And then he burns his mouth and goes, "Ah!" No, you know, See, I, shut him up problem. with a pop tart. It's this quick. The it's there. You don't even have to toast it. Josh, if you have a large son. And they have problems with timing. Julia's uncle's like 6'5". My son's going to be so big. I think you're going to have a waifish child. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to have to bottle feed till they're nine. (laughs) Sickly Victorian ones. No, God forbid. You're going to... uh, So whenever you have a child and they have no patience, you know what you do to test the filling? You cut it in half and you put it on your chin to see if it's hot enough. Are what the kidding? hell are we talking about? What, what the hell are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? You're talking about this you're point? Talking about no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Berlin Wall. You know, five years before, it may work toaster strudels the reason why. Josh. You know, they might have. I give the Josh. win. To, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go Who ahead. Who wins in the debate versus Pop-Tarts and toaster strudels? Toaster strudels taste infinitely better. However, Pop-Tarts had 20 years of just advanced marketing campaigns preying on the whims of children. I will continue to buy Pop-Tarts till the day I die because of the Tobey Maguire Spidey Berry Pop-Tarts that I loved so. 
Nicole. Also, Pop-Tarts, I think more utility. It's a grab-and-go breakfast item. This is effectively a substitute good for a granola bar, which we've all seen have a massive mm. rise. People, Americans now are too hurried, too just uh, mired in wage slavery to even pour themselves a bowl of cereal, Nicole. That's mm. why people don't do it. They're eating yogurt out of a cup. They're sucking down Pop-Tarts. There's no room in American society to eat toaster strudel. We don't even have three minutes anymore. I say make room, make time. Life's precious. Do things that make you happy. Do things that make you feel good. If that's drawing boobs on toaster strudel, do it. It's better than Pop-Tarts. Thanks for watching. All right, Nicole. We've heard what you and I have to say. And now, well, it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a segment we call Opinions, Opinions are, are Like Casseroles. But before we get to that, it's everybody's favorite segment, Review a Review, where I am going to review one of your reviews from Apple Podcasts. Please go to Apple Podcasts, give us uh, five stars. Or Please give however. us five stars. We're like Uber drivers. Give us five stars. Yeah, we need them or else we get fired from uh, podcast.org. Uh, <laughs> all right, first up, we got Leah Fine. Fun and funny food fans. The two hosts are young, funny, and interact like siblings in the <laughs> best way. Enjoyable debates interspersed with foodie information. Good guests and engaging topics. I rate that five stars. That's I mean, a five star review. Leah, you really covered the breadth of it, and you called us young. Do you think you we know? interact like siblings? I think so. Yeah, I think I think we have a jocular sort of style with each other, kind of needling hmm. each other, but in a way that we obviously respect each other and you have a close. Huh. I don't think me and you operate like siblings. Actually, what do you think we operate like? I don't know. Like podcast co-hosts? I don't know. No. Because that feels weird and impersonal. If I just said I think we're like siblings and you're like, we're just podcasts. We're not, like I, though. I think we're just friends. Yeah. Because like if you were my sibling, I'd be a lot harsher with you. Like a lot harsher. Don't. Don't do that. I can't handle it. a lot harsher with you. Like a lot harsher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you'd like, if I was your sister, like you'd put me in a headlock or something. I have never assaulted Nicole at work, to be clear. <laughs> I feel I've, like you do a lot I've of I've never assaulted. Noogie, noogie. <laughs> I don't. I've never noogied Nicole at, or any other... <laughs> But if we were sim like if you had a sibling that was like a year because I'm a year younger than you, right? Yeah. Like if you had like a, a year younger than your sister, you wouldn't give her you wouldn't noogie her? I, I don't know, because I was the younger, I can only speak from the younger you sibling's totally perspective. My brother used to pin me down, he'd go <laughs> and then he would like droop a loogie down and go <laughs> and then spit it up. But of course, like that loogie's gonna fall one day and it's gonna hit you in the eye and you start crying, and then he goes, I didn't even mean to, I was trying to do a funny joke. And you're like, it's a joke to who? <laughs> joke for who? It's not a joke for me. They didn't spit on my face. So, yeah, I don't think... Also, like, I'm, like, if all my siblings are so much older than me and, like, it's so impersonal, like, yeah. I don't even know them. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think you're siblings. <laughs> all right, Maggie, play that first opinion. <laughs> I mean, we could talk hey there, about it. Josh more. and Nicole. So I was making a potato curry uh, Indian style, biscuit. and I realized my coconut milk had expired. So Whatever. I substituted it with condensed sweetened milk okay. and added a bunch of limes, lemons, and some rice water vinegar, rice wine vinegar, uh -huh. to help make it a little less sweet. And I bet if you gaslight someone hard enough, they could think it's a traditional Indian sweet dessert. Okay. What are your thoughts? If you want to hear our thoughts on a man substituting sweetened condensed milk for coconut milk in his, uh, what, uh, alu, what's it called? Al alu masala? I don't know, Indian potato curry. Uh, <laughs> go head over to the audio-only version on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, that's it from us today. Hope you learned something. Every Wednesday, we got our audio-only versions out, and then every Sunday, we got our videos. Keep listening. Yeah, if you want to be featured on Opinions Like Castro's, you can hit us up at 833-DOGPOD1. The number again is 833-DOGPOD1. Does that mean I can take my lip gloss off? Yeah, take your lip gloss off, dude. Rub, rub a bunch of salt on it. It helps. Uh, oh, yeah, YouTube. We do it like other videos. You should watch them. Mythical Kitchen YouTube channel. You know the drill. See y'all next time.